Within the sealed box here, I have the Cube or Aldo Cube as they are known as now, iWork 5X. Now this is a promising looking Apollo Lake N3450 powered laptop slash convertible because what the screen can do is flip right around 360 degrees. So it converts it into a large tablet. Now the screen is 13.3 inches. It's 1080p, it has 10 touch points apparently, but I don't think it's gonna be fully laminated. I haven't confirmed that by looking at the information on the website, but we'll see in just a second when I get this unboxed. So it has four gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of internal storage, which can be expanded upon because it does have an M.2 SATA SSD slot on there. So I will pull the rear off it We'll look at the internals and see if it has a copper heat sink and what size of SSD we can put in there. So other specs include two USB 3 ports, micro SD card slot, HDMI out, and a 30 watt hour battery, all in a full metal premium apparently build. So it's looking very interesting. So we'll get this unboxed here. I'll go through my normal unboxing procedure before we look at the final review, which will be following up this video here. So let's get started on this. The uh, packaging looks quite premium. Not bad, it kind of reminds me of the Cube Thinker. Hopefully it's along those kind of lines of the Cube Thinker, which has an excellent build quality. Very much a premium laptop, that one. So the box has nothing really on it about specs. Oh, just a few things on the back there, but it didn't say much really, just uh, 64 gigabytes. Okay, yeah, premium kind of packaging. Well, it's a lot better than what the, you typically get. So I'll just check out the accessories first in this box on the side. So the box is jam-packed with the power supply here. So the plug on it, that looks to me like the typical 3mm that we see, so DC charging. It does have a Type-Z port on there, so I wonder if that will also allow us to charge it. And it is rated to 12 volts, 2.5 amps. That's more or less what we get on all the Apollo lakes. And there is the other side in here to this that's going to come out, hopefully. They have given us a power cable there, which is of course a small little US style one, so I'm going to need an adapter for that. And now just the laptop remains. So it feels actually quite heavy, a little bit bulky there. Okay, we do have some uh, card here. So this has probably just instructions or whatnot, Cube, iWork 5, and would just be a quick guide and things. And that looks to be, yeah, it is all in Chinese, so I'm not going to bother about that. There's nothing else in there, that's just um, paper there. So have a look at the weight, got my scales powered up. So it weighs in at 1.68 kilos, that is definitely on the heavy side, it's not exactly going to be light to hold this when you flip the screen around in the tablet form. Okay, so along the bottom, four rubber feet, these are all screwed in place, so we'll be pulling this rear plate off soon to have a look at the internals and the SSD slot, and probably install my own SSD. And we'll have a look at the thickness. So it comes in to be approximately 15 millimeters thick at the thickest part there. That's not including the rubber feet, which I can't actually just get to, but that's gonna add another millimeter or two there. So about 17, and at the front, it's around 13, 14 millimeters there. So very thin for what it is. So this is very premium looking so far, really good. There's an iWork 5X logo on the top there. It's not offensive at all. We're not seeing a big, huge Chinese logo on the rear like some of them. The top of it, that is very solid. That doesn't really have any flex at all. So on the right side of the laptop, we have DC and 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, USB 3 port, micro SD card slot, and then a power button. Now this power button is made out of metal. Now this Spacing of this could be a little bit better. So if you're going to be using a wide SD card reader or something like that, then you won't be able to use at least this port, that there, and then plug in your headphones because obviously it's going to be blocked. There's just got to, not going to be enough room. On the left side, a Type-C port, status LED, micro HDMI out, and a second USB 3 port. Now we'll test and find out whether this Type-C supports charging. Hopefully it will. The hinge on the rear is one of those special ones, so it allows the screen, of course, to flip right around. And it's not made out of plastic, this is made out of metal, all of it. Okay guys, so place your bets. What do you think? Fully laminated screen or non-laminated? I'm going to put $10 on non-laminated because of this price range, but hopefully I'm wrong here. Let's find out. So that hinge, 
opens quite nicely and I can see that it is, yes, a non-laminated screen there. Let's have a look at the touchpad. Nice and large, very good size on that. Hopefully this is a precision one. Very good. Little bit of flex here. Nice feeling keys, decent travel. And we do have a shortcut there to disable the touchpad, screen brightness, volume controls, print screen, and then you get that extra row along here. So very good when it comes out to well, the options we've got on the keyboard layout there. So you can clearly see some status LEDs here, power, number lock, caps lock, and there is this grill along the top, which is probably where the speakers, I would say, the sound will be transmitted up through there, which, hmm, I don't know, interesting sort of placement. I mean, it's better than the downward firing speakers on the rear at least. Hopefully these sound okay, but I will test that out in this video. So up the front, you can see the two megapixel webcam and either side of it, those are microphones there. So we're gonna have dual array microphones. Good placement too, because on the keyboard, or at least in that area, you would pick up a lot more feedback from the keys if you happen to be typing at the same time. And nice attention to detail here. There are two little rubber feet. This is gonna stop the screen from scratching up against the keyboard. And a look now at the gap we have between the digitizer glass and then the IPS panel below. You can see, if I put my finger there, that I'd say that gap, that border you can see inside is in fact the gap there. What do you reckon? I think about 1.5 millimeters. It's definitely not the smallest gap, unfortunately. Hopefully it will not be too distracting. So side on, you can see it looks very slim and sleek, which is great. Now just demonstrate very quickly how the screen works. And now it's become a tablet, a very heavy tablet at that. But you can use it in tent mode. And you could also use it in presentation mode. But it looks like the hinge isn't going to be able to handle that weight uh, using it in what they call presentation mode. For about there, the screen's starting to drop, you can see. Very slowly, that's eventually going to fall down. So you have to prop it up at an angle of about there in order to stop that from falling down. Okay, so as I expected, it's Windows 10 Chinese. I won't be able to change this. I'll have to do a new Windows 10 install. So I'm gonna go into the operating system and just show you some of the things I can, the device manager, have a look at a couple of things. And then what I'll do is I'll do a Windows 10 install and I'll back up the drivers too as well. They will be available on techtablets.com if you're after the drivers. So I've got it here in Windows Chinese. Now I'm backing up the drivers currently with one driver. That's gonna take a little while, it always does. But I've managed to pull up a couple of things that at least I can understand. We can see that the RAM on there, four gigabytes of RAM, they have dedicated a little bit to the Intel GPU there. And okay, that's the Chinese version. I'm trying to, at the moment, install uh, the language pack, but it doesn't look like it's gonna work. It just keeps spinning on that logo like it's trying to download it. So I'm not going to bother with that. I'm just going to go straight and do a, a clean install once I've got those drivers. So the touchpad, first impressions of it are very good. This feels like a great touchpad. And I can see, okay, this is all in Chinese, but I can see that it is a precision touchpad. So another plus here, another positive. And also wanted to mention that the build quality of this laptop is really good. It reminds me so much of their premium laptop, the Cube Thinker i35. So we'll have a quick look at the screen. I've just got a couple of my typical sample images here. So you're gonna get a, a bit of reflections, of course, because it's a non-laminated and a glass covered panel. But to me, it is a very decent panel so far. Just using it, really quite good looking. Okay, we've got larger bezels. We always get the larger bezels on these yoga style uh, laptops because they need more reinforcing apparently in this area here. That's why we get that because there's a metal bar going along here but a very decent looking screen. So at the moment it's on 70, no, sorry, 50% brightness. That's 75, 100. Looking bright, I would just guess now, I'll get my equipment out later on and measure it, but it looks about 150, 300 lux. And dulls, dims right down. Super dim that, hey, you can see me there. So the EMMC they have on there is a Toshiba brand one, which is great. We're not seeing N card in here, which is those horrible 4C or B1 brand ones, which are 
tend to be quite slow. I'll benchmark that later on once I get everything in English. And then the wireless, just to confirm, is, yes, Intel Wireless Dual Band AC 3165, which is a fairly decent chipset. It's not bad. It's got two antennas in there, and normally the range and speeds on that are really quite good in previous notebooks that I have looked at. So I just tested out the micro SD card slot with some of my files that I normally set up on these uh, notebooks and these tablets. And I did notice that it was a little bit difficult to insert this micro SD card, but once in, as you can see, it sits nice and flush. So I've got some really good news here. That Type-C port is a, what I would call a proper Type-C port. So it's USB, what do you call it, 3.1? Display out up to 4K, 30 Hertz, charging and data all at the same time. This is awesome. This is what I love to see on these kind of devices because it just adds to it, adds to the value of it, doesn't it? So my hub here that I work, I've got here, this is a Havit USB 3.1 Type-C hub. I just plugged that in and I had my monitor running. I plugged in a keyboard and a mouse and also had it charging all at the same time. That's great news. So just typed out a little bit on the keyboard and they've got like a nice, how to describe, like a firm feel to them, a nice feel when you press down on them. Very good keyboard so far. I'm really enjoying it and liking it. And again, same goes for that touchpad that it's large and being a precision touchpad, it, accuracy at the finer movements seems to be really good and I can see that it supports gestures. You're able to tweak those gestures so you can change it if you don't like the inverted scrolling or whatever. All of those options are all there, but so far this is shaping up to be very good keyboard and touchpad. Now the touch accuracy of the screen seems good. No problem selecting things. Now there was a little bit of lag there. That's because I've got about 10 things going on in the background. I think Windows Update is also running. I'm dumping the drivers to it at the moment, which is a pretty slow process. But yeah, the touch is looking good. So the screen can be, of course, flipped around and then used even in portrait mode. Now the keyboard on the bottom, you're probably wondering, is it still active when you flip it around? No, it's disabled automatically. There is no lock button on here, but at least it's disabled now. And the accelerometer is working perfectly fine. You see it flips that around. One thing to note though, because the bottom of it here does not have any rubber feet on it, that if you place this soft alloy on a table and there's sand on it, imagine, or something like that, and you move it around, that is probably going to be quite easy to scratch up. So looking now at the internals, straight away you can see two counterweights. This is probably to stop it from flipping over when you're tapping on the screen. Now the screen when you tap it does move a little bit. That happens on all of these uh, notebooks with this design. It's something you just can't avoid. But everything's screwed into place, including the battery screwed in there. And you'll see a very large copper heatsink that's one millimeter thick. They've done a really good job with this. Now mod is out there. If you did want to help improve the thermals, you could probably go a step further and put uh, a big thermal pad here, transfer heat onto the rear casing, but that'll make it a little bit hotter, of course. So there is metal behind the keyboard backing it up. That's why it feels so firm. Uh, the hinge is all screwed into place. The speakers at the top there. I do believe there's two inside there. I'll test them out in just a second. Now right here is what we're after. This is the SSD bay, the slot. So we have either the 22 by 42 will fit with the first screw hole here. And then we've got the 2260, which fits on that last hole here. Now they haven't included a screw, but in order to fit this 22 by 61, this is my sand disc that I have, I'd have to break this out. Now they've designed it so you can, you can just lift this up and it will break right about there and you can put that in. Unfortunately, my crucial 22 by 80, the full sized one, look at this, if I plug it in, there's no way that's gonna work, it sticks out. So sadly that's not possible, but it is great that we can of course install an SSD in here now the BIOS is fully unlocked as you can see, but we do not have access to that power limit setting, which is the setting that I found out that on the likes of the Civil Top Air that I could boost the performance because without the power limits, the GPU really did perform well. So I've got a USB pen drive plugged in now with Linux Manjaro. Just wanted to test and see if that's going to boot and allow us to run Linux on this machine. And it's looking good so far. Okay, so Linux Manjaro, you can see booted up just fine. It is running the touch, that's working. And also the wireless is working, Bluetooth is working, the screen brightness I don't think is working. 
sound works. Oh no, sorry, screen brightness does work. So what doesn't work is the touchpad. That seems to be the only thing so far. Oh, and the auto rotation. So you have to hunt around for drivers for those. So we know when I looked at the internals of these speakers, they output from just above the screen there. Let's have a listen to how they sound. Actually, they don't sound too bad. If you heard from that, that there's a bit of bass in there, which we normally don't get. These aren't the greatest speakers, but they are so much better than the other notebooks, the Apollo Lake ones that I've been looking at by far. They've got a bit of volume to them. There's a bit more bass. They sound a lot better. So I don't want to speak too soon here, but I think I might have found the best Apollo Lake device out of China, the best Apollo Lake notebook. This is really good so far, what I have seen. So the trackpad is great, it's large, it's a precision touchpad, and it's working really well. It's accurate with the finer movements. I'm very happy with it so far. Same goes for the keyboard. Typing on the keyboard is a pleasant experience. Now the keys don't have a lot of travel, they're a little bit shorter than other keyboards I've looked at, but they've got that nice kind of firmer feel to them, and of course there's no flex on that keyboard. You can see, wow, a little tiny, but when you're typing on it, there really is no flex. It's a very nice keyboard. Now the build quality is excellent. It's almost as good if not the same kind of level as the Cube Thinker i35. Now that model is their premium core M with eight gigabytes and that sells for about 560 US. This is selling for around 300 at the time of this unboxing and the build quality is really good. Now the screen, it's not fully laminated. There's a gap of about one to one and a half millimeters but you don't really notice it. And what I've noticed too, that you probably picked up if you've got a keen eye, there's no screen protector pre-applied on, on there and the glass looks really nice. It feels to me like it could be hopefully a uh, scratch resistant tempered glass that they are using. Now the EMC speeds, you can see them, they're not the fastest, the 160 reads and 52 sequential writes. The 4K writes are quite low there, so installing applications on that drive may be a little bit slow. Uh, but I haven't trimmed it yet, so that could be affecting that score. So the best parts of this for me are the fact that we can convert this into a rather bulky heavy tablet, but you can use it in presentation mode. You've got the touch screen on there, it just adds an extra level, and the performance and everything else will be tested in my final review. That is gaming, thermals, you name it, it's going to be in there. I'll use it a lot longer just to get an overall feel of this. It'll be a week or two before I have the full review out. If you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments and I will try to answer you. Bye for now.